All right, so if you follow me, you saw that I bought a new tool. So this is the video doing a quick review, tips, tricks, things I learned, and some pointers. So first off, this thing is heavy. If you plan on buying this, bring help. You're gonna need a truck. You're gonna need at least two, maybe three, four people to make it easy. I had help loading it by the uh, people at Harbor Freight. They used a forklift. Um, I did it by myself here at the house because I didn't have anyone that could come give me a hand. I used some two by fours or two by twelves or something and slid it out the bed of the truck, just kind of ramped it and it broke the two buys and yeah, it, it wasn't pretty. I didn't drop it, but my back has problems now. Uh, I'll be making another trip to the chiropractor soon. So anyways, this is the heavy duty big boy hydraulic fed coolant pumped metal cutting band saw from Harbor Fate. If you're planning on getting one of these, you need to do it soon because the price of the damn thing keeps going up. Uh, seen older videos where these things were selling for, I don't know how much, but people were getting them on sale for like 600, 700, 800 dollars maybe. Um, I want to say this thing now is like 12 or 1300, 1350 maybe, something like that. And I ended up, I used to be a track member or whatever, and I haven't shopped at Harbor Freight in a long time. Apparently they send out a 20% on a single item, no matter what it is, coupon. That's only good for maybe a month after you haven't shopped there for a year. So if you plan on buying something big from them, do that. Just wait, don't shop there for a while. Use someone else's account or whatever, or pay cash so they don't know. And you know, save 20% on something that's really expensive. You know, thousand dollar item, that's 200 bucks. So onto this thing, uh, it's heavy obviously. So far I've yet to see any of the major negatives about it. It is 110, 120, whatever. It can, apparently can do 220 as well. There's your motor info, it's one horse. There's more info there. The blade that comes on it is ass. I ordered this from Amazon, there's the specs on it. It's M42 from iMachinist, 93 inch by three and a quarter by 35 thou but uh eight to eight and 12 tpi you're gonna want something like that if you cut metal most likely the one that comes on it is a six tpi piece of trash throw it in the garbage so anyways here's the bandsaw blade there's the info wrote down and there's the sticker if you want that so back to the bandsaw so so far I've only used it once to demill a receiver off of an old Mosin the Gantt I was gonna do a custom build on and I messed it up because I misdrilled for a scope mount and went into the bore face a little bit. So it turned into trash real quick. It might've been able to be repaired, but I wasn't willing to fight it since I only paid hundred dollars for the rifle. Um, on to tips and whatnot. The, this doesn't come assembled when you get it. This little cover, it has this hole here that I don't know why I guess it used to have a support bracket that went there because this thing is you know, flimsy it has a thumb screw that holds the bottom right here this flips open it's got the pulley on the motor pulley on the drive shaft and four different pulleys obviously for four different speeds you'll set according to what you're cutting and what kind of blade you have mine's low speed I'll be cutting steel and stainless steel most of the time I bought it for pie cuts for exhaust because previously I was using chop saws and when you cut the stainless with chop saws, it leaves a lot of burr, and I spend a lot of time on this belt sander. So I don't want to do that anymore. So I don't have coolant for it yet. I've heard you can use like antifreeze. I don't recommend that. You can use the RVs antifreeze that you use for the like drinking water. That's apparently safe, but it doesn't have anti-rust additives from what I understand. I don't know if you can find, a, I guess, a water-soluble anti-rust additive you can mix with it to use that. I've got a machinist friend that's hopefully gonna hook me up with some coolant. So coolant switch is in series with the actual bandsaw's on switch. So when it's on, it does nothing by itself. You flip the bandsaw on, coolant pump runs until it turns off, it automatically kills the pump for you. Very nice feature since I don't have coolant right now. Right now I'm just using the old deep creep or oil spray to lubricate the bandsaw blade and cool it a little bit. Here's the cut face that you get. It's not bad at all. He's a little burr at the very end, you can see there. It is hydraulic feed, adjustable by this knob clockwise slows it down counterclockwise speeds it up this is a shutoff valve and it's very slow right now there we go 
There you go. I'm gonna lock that because I actually moved this forward some from last time I cut it. Doesn't quite line up now, so obviously the blade will hit. So, like I said, when you first get it, you wanna change the blade. This is adjustable here. This is just a, a blade guide. I moved it out so you could read the blade. Loosen that, slide it out as far as you can to get it as close to narrowing down the cut surface. The downside is it leaves like a six inch gap here at least. I guess it's six inch, something like that. I don't know, guy measurements or something. Anyways, the, it sucks that it doesn't come out further. It'd be nice if it did. A lot of people will modify these so they go up further out and they give you a more stable cut that helps prevent blade walk, which is notorious on porta bands. This is your cut off, shut off valve. I don't, I guess it's so you can choke down the flow of the coolant. This is, I want to say mine is the most updated version of this saw now. There used to be a green one. They used to have like a, one of those flex tubes for this and now they hard line it. I kind of like this design more. Another thing you're going to want to do when you change the blade, you have to adjust the tension angle or the, uh, uh, what's the actual terminology? The belt track or the blade tracking, the, like the band tracking. Now in the manual, it might have well have been Chinese because the picture they show is three hex bolts on this and they have like some kind of slider up here and they tell you to loosen the top one. Well, they tell you to lift the, the saw up first. So, so first I'm gonna lift it so I can show you better. Careful when you do this. This is one thing people complain about. It is very back heavy where that motor is and if you drop it, it will, you can hear it lifting. You will flip this thing over if you don't ease it up, all right? So to change the blade, you want to loosen this, slide this out of the way. You'll have to take off this belt guard. It's these two screws. I recommend taking these off, these screws. That's the hinge for the blade cover. It's held on by thumb screws back here where it can swivel out. But to adjust the tracking of it, it's a whole lot easier with this out of the way. Otherwise, you'll be working all the way around it. All right, so you loosen the tension, obviously. Pull the blade off, put the new one on. Uh, tighten the tension back up a little bit. Don't tighten it real tight yet. You have this little guide on the side, this dyma dynamometer. Eh, it's more or less a tensiometer in my opinion, kind of thing. But um, it's got a little notch there. You want it kind of close to the greenish. And these two have to be loosened a little bit. And the adjustment is actually a hex head or Allen head in there. I don't remember what size this is. Pretty much everything on this saw is metric. These are half inch. I don't know if they're actually a 14 or a 12 as well. I think it'd be a 14. I want to say 14 and 12 are kind of interchangeable. Pretty much everything's metric, obviously. It's hard to phrase Chinese. So anyways, you'll loosen these and screwing this in will kick the bottom of the pulley out, which in turn will keep the bandsaw blade seated back. So I didn't run it ever with that. I left it as it is. I didn't adjust anything with the angle of this or anything like that. I just swapped the blade and it wanted to walk the blade right off really quick. So apparently they never ran the damn thing anyways. So like I said, loosen these, tighten this, run it in to where you'll see the pulley drop, it kind of kicking back slowly. And when you do, just keep playing it. You do this with tension on it and with it running, be ready to have, either be ready to flick that switch down here back off or have someone with you because you're gonna be watching up here, this is in the way and I'm not opening right now, but you're gonna be watching that blade on the pulley to see if it's wanting to walk its way off of the pulley. If it starts walking, turn it off, snug it up a little bit more. I took a, a rubber mallet so I didn't damage the blade and just tapped the blade back in so I didn't risk walking it off and then turned it on, watched it again. Watch the blade, see if it walked off, turned it off it did, snug it up some more. When you're done, snug these down. Now be aware, if you have to start kicking it out a lot, you might have to loosen these a little bit more. If you only tighten this as much as these are loose, all right? Uh, they, the manual says to have these guides loose. Uh, I don't really know why it didn't seem to make much difference. But when you're done, take this wire wheel, kick it back to where it's up against the blade again and snug it, all right? And let's see, what else do we need to touch on? Oh. Uh, I got these in my parts. Two nuts, two washers. I don't know where they go. If anyone has these in their kit as well left over or figures out where these went, the washer almost is like the same size as this. The nuts are about the same size as these, it looks like. I don't know what they go to. The rest of the hardware was the stuff to like assemble this uh, cover piece. 
and whatever else. This deal down here, in case you were wondering like I was originally, you take, I, I swapped it for the instructions. Instructions had this up here and the hex down here. Screw that. Uh, anyways, you take this, loosen it, and it's on a rod. This is a stop. So you'll slide it out and snug it up. That way when you're cutting parts, if you're cutting the same size of multiple parts, you just run the part back against this stock. Okay? Real handy if you're cutting multiple things. If you're cutting, well, multiple things in the same length, that'll keep the, the links the exact same. All you have to do is butt them up against that snug device. Device is quite nice. It's just a little crank handle. You'll break it loose. You can just grab this and pull it back. Move your part. Put whatever next part. You can run it up against your part and then snug it down again. Good to go. So you don't have to sit there and crank a handle forever. It's quite nice. Uh, a lot of people were talking about they bird, I think, maybe this notch out so you can get more angle out of it or something. Or maybe they cut something away on the guide. I don't know. You can look up YouTube videos to see what I'm talking about. But some people were talking about modifying this to be able to get more angle out of the cut because apparently it interferes with something when you go to cut a large angle like that. Uh, other things that I discovered. I don't have coolant yet. I think I touched on that. Uh, I've got a machinist buddy that's gonna hook me up with some coolant, so I'm cutting dry with a little bit of oil that I'm spraying on it, WD, or I've got deep creep here, or whatever. Just something to cool the blade and lubricate it some. This is adjustable, as I said. You normally wanna run it as close to the part as possible. Uh, if you're cutting metal, low speed's probably gonna be the key, low feed. And oh, there is a tabletop for this. So if you wanna cut vertical, you take these two screws out. My tabletop's underneath there in the reservoir. I think the reservoir tank holds like three gallons. That's the tank, and there's the plate I was talking about. And there's the little pump down there. A lot of people build carts for these. One, to raise it up a little higher to a comfortable, like waist height, working height level. The other thing is because, as I said, if you flip this up too much, it wants to rock back because the wheels are actually behind where the, the weight of the motor is being lifted at. So they'll make a cart and make it longer so it has more stability. And usually the cart ends up heavier because they probably make it about like I made this monstrosity of a cart from this vendor. But yeah, that is it. Oh, also they tell you when you lift it up to lock the valve. This is a locking shut off. So when you do that, you can't move the hydraulic. And obviously, like I said, the feed in slower, out, or out, yeah, out faster, in slower. So as you see, it's quite slow right now. I gotta get it to where it's wanting to drop. Right now, it's not. It's still not front heavy yet. There we go. Now I can loosen this up. There we go. And the lock. All right. So this was one of the things people complained about was this shut off breaking the switch because you have to have it adjusted perfect to where it kills the saw as it drops, like right when it finishes cutting. Um, I only have cut this, so I can't really speak on how good it works. I don't know why people have issues. Maybe when you're cutting different size stuff or maybe this moves, I don't know. I might change my mind later when I break the switch off, but so far so good, it works like a champ. I've cut this three times and it cuts smooth every time so I don't know I kind of shut off when it was supposed to but I think that's it if you have any questions ask away if you have any tips for me comment away please let me know and uh, I look forward to using this thing getting some getting some benefit out of the amount of money it costs but thanks for watching guys